Thank you. First of all, thank you to everybody, especially to Marco Fagella for the greetings. Uh, it's a pleasure to be with you all. Uh, and so thank you to my friends from Portugal and all over the world. So my, my talk today is uh, about a work we have done with uh, many other people that I want to acknowledge. And uh, it's concerned the behavior, the dynamic behavior of the Leaning Tower of Pisa, uh, which I think is a very famous uh, monument. And uh, with my surprise, I knew that it is most famous uh, building in China, uh, more than any other monuments in Italy and all over the world, I think. And indeed, it's a very nice uh, tower. Uh, let me acknowledge first uh, the big group that worked with me uh, for five years on the subject uh, with, uh, is uh, some uh, the Professor Bisaghella from Fujo University, Professor Marano and Monti from La Sapienza, and Professor Vanzi from Chieti, uh, Professor Bartelletti and others from Pisa, Professor Marano from Polytechnic of Bari and now Polito from Polytechnic of Torino, and Professor Milonakis from University of Bristol, and many others that are. In this, uh, in this work and in a publication uh, uh, who went out on, uh, on network spectra last year. So my talk would be, would consist on the introduction, uh, uh, the, the Duomo of a place in Pisa, the motivation, the history, and the previous studies, then seismic monitoring that we have done and then uh, the subsoil model and uh, the, the detection of the seismic input uh, useful for investigating this, the tower, and then the numerical model of the tower, uh, which we set up uh, thanks to the monitoring and then the conclusions. So the motivation, this is the well-known Piazza del Duomo in, uh, in Pisa. Uh, you can see the tower, but if I can suggest you to go there, I would suggest you to visit the cemetery, which is a wonderful place. Nobody, just you people knows, but it's an incredible uh, uh, building. Um, well, the motivation is, is there any clear reason to explain the lack of seismic damage on the Tower of Pisa due to earthquake in 900 years? Uh, Contrary to the other monuments standing on uh, in Pisa and in the same uh, site, indeed the tower, as all heritage building and some very uncertain structural parameters, uh, can monitoring help and it helps indeed. So the knowledge is very important. So this is the seismic map. There is map for Italy, the seismic map. So Pisa, you can see here Pisa, uh, Pisa. and uh, uh, it's not a very pro seismic prone areas, but the, the, as you can see on the right, there has been uh, more than six uh, important earthquakes uh, in Pisa. And in 1846, uh, there was one which caused a lot of damages in Pisa and also uh, the cathedral had important damages and the church quite fell down and other important things. Why the tower didn't? Uh, the, the tower sta construction started in 1100 and the st stopped in 1178. And then they start again in the middle of 1200s. And then with the Battle of La Meloria, they stopped again. And then at the middle of the 1300, they start again and uh, they built uh, the Belfry. Then uh, uh, from 2015 to 2018, uh, the tower start to bend uh, with points is uh, uh, meters. And in uh, 1370, they had 1.6 meters on the right, on south, towards south. And then uh, the, the tower moved and moved and moved, uh, as you can see here. And uh, when they build the belfry on the uh, south side, they, they built uh, six steps instead of uh, four on the opposite side. So it was already an important. In 1817, uh, there are some painting showing that the, the tower were sinking in the soil. And, uh, and uh, 
1859, indeed, the tower uh, was totally out because in 1837, it was built a catino at the base of the tower and the, the square was uh, uh, totally, uh, the, 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 the soil were removed. Uh, which was uh, over the, 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 the base of the tower. And uh, finally, in uh, 1933, they, we had some important work at the base of the tower with uh, some consolidation and waterproofing of the foundation as the sea and the water level, the water table is just nearby the tower. And uh, uh, finally, the, the tower was moving and moving again. And in 1993, there was a, a trial of temporary stabilization with some important lead weight put on the upper part of the foundation of the tower. And in uh, 1999, they started the, the technique of excavating uh, uh, like in Mexico City for the cathedral, and they did some important under excavating. And indeed, this was a very successful experience, very difficult and successful experience. And now the tower, these are the data, and then I will show you the, the tilt of the tower. The total height of the tower is 58 meters. Uh, with a foundation of 20 meters of diameter with a hole in the center and the diameter in the first level is 60 meters with an opening of 7.5 meters at a weight of 14,000 uh, tons. The center of mass of the tower is at uh, 22.5 meters and the tilt uh, at in the 2000, 1995 was 5.5 degrees now after the under excavation is about in 2008 was about four degrees. It, it's, it moves very slowly now. And uh, uh, so the tilt, which was 5.5 meters in, in 1995 is now about, about four meters only. You can see here uh, at the beginning, they start to build the tower and when they arrive in the middle of 1280, uh, uh, it moved on that side, then it started to move on the other side. And when they build the belfry, they have a strong increase in, 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 um, in tilt. And starting from uh, the end of 1300, uh, the tower moved and moved. Here, there are some important dates. And uh, here there is the drawing in 1817. And the important date you can see here is 1838 when they built the Catino. And then the, the tower start to move again and again. And in 1999, the, the, the important work done at the base of the tower after many, many studies reduced very much the tilt and stopped for a while. Uh, we don't know for how much. The, the tilting of the, of the tower. How is the soil underneath the tower? This is very important. Well, the study in the 30 years before, uh, before our work uh, uh, went until uh, 70 meters in depth and the soil was very bad because uh, Pisa were nearby the seaside when they start to build the tower and now it's far, but uh, the soil is very bad and the Arno River uh, cover all the, all the, all the, the zone with very, uh, very soft soil, as you can see here. So they did some uh, investigation, but the results show that the soil was very, very soft. Many different investigation, down all, cross all, and the uh, seismic dilatometer, I don't have the time to explain the meaning, but, uh, uh, I, and they moved up, up to 70 meters with a very, very soft soil. You can see at 70 meters, the, the shear wave velocity is, is only 300 meter per second. Uh, but where is their bedrock? Is there a bedrock? Uh, so we needed to uh, identify some bedrock. Uh, something similar to bedrock. And with our new test, uh, we found some, uh, something which can be used as a bedrock is not a real bedrock. 
we did a very important array to D, very big, and we are thinking of making a bigger one. Uh, these are the studies done in 1993 by Faccioli and Grandori, and they just took some earthquakes from uh, the catalogs and uh, taken into consideration the type of soil that they have, they choose some earthquakes and they decided to consider some uh, in seismic input, as you can see here, uh, for a return period that they assume to be 130 years. So the horizontal motion was this one on the left. Uh, this is the mean and this is the mean plus one standard. And uh, you can see here mean plus one standard. And again, for vertical motion, which appear to be very important due to the lining, to the tilting of the, of the tower. Uh, here you have the the mean uh, vertical motion and mean plus one standard. Uh, indeed, the, 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 the accelerogram were only scaled based on the peak ground acceleration. It was 1990, 1993, some times ago. Uh, they also did some models and uh, uh, just numerical models, as you can see here, and they find based on the data they had this period and they got some uh, results in with the di dynamic analysis. And ISMES uh, is an important uh, uh, um, uh, industry for measurement in Italy. In 1994, did some uh, dynamic uh, uh, measure with Vibordine, and they find the first mode, experimental mode, one second, about 9.93 seconds. Uh, and uh, Okay, these are the results of Grandori and Faccioli. They use this uh, G fact, G uh, shear modulus of 70,000 uh, kilonewton per square meters with some uh, numbers. And I will show you the, 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 what we use uh, later. Uh, with these are the measure that has been done by ISMES. They found uh, uh, with many instrumentations also some modes and uh, uh, now we go to our work. We have some measures, uh, just uh, these uh, four points, just few measure, but, but for 30 years. And the measurements and recording, uh, 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 we have many recordings, very short, I would say 30, 40 seconds, not very much. And uh, so uh, these are the measures in just a few points. Uh, and the, 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 the intensity were very low, about eight, eight milli G at the top of the tower, so very, very small. Uh, so what can you can see here, uh, how varies the period of vibration with the, uh, with the period of the measures. And you can find uh, see that we found this first mode at one second, one hertz, and we also measured the, uh, uh, the, the dynamic vibration of the tower without soil structure inter, 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 interaction, subtracting the rigid motion due to the base rotation. And we found that the first motion of the tower is 0.3 seconds only, the horizontal free motion, uh, motion first motion. So you can see here, this is an incredible number. So the structure passes from 0.3 second to one second due to soil structure interaction. This is a unique case also for such height uh, uh, of the of buildings uh, in the world. It's the highest number, higher increasing period. And this explains some of the results. Indeed, you can see here that uh, if you filter the motion at one second and you see what's happened on the S4 and what's happening in S1, you have the opposite vertical motion, which means you have a rotation of the base, which moves uh, the, uh, the upper part very much. And this is very important for the tower and also for the intervention on the tower. And if you measure what's happened, filter the motion uh, between uh, two hertz and four hertz, uh, you see that on S4 and S1, you have uh, the simultaneous vibration. So you have a vertical motion. 
uh, and this is very, very important. So the vertical motion is simultaneous at, uh, at high frequency and is opposite height at low frequency. So these are the results in our study. We have a north-south uh, around one earth uh, and others found these numbers. And in east-west, uh, uh, you, you get the same numbers, similar numbers. And the vertical we found only with Nakamura in 1999, about three Hertz. And then we got also a torsional, we suppose a torsional one at 6.29. Uh, the subsoil model. This is what we have done. You can see here uh, a, a 2D array and you can we could measure, I don't have the time to enter, but we could measure the velocity of uh, soil shear waves until 100 meters. And we found that at around 100 meters, you have the top of a B soil, which can be considered a sort of a bedrock, a bedrock based on B soil. So we can make an amplification thanks to that, and we can find the response in, at the top of the of the structure of the of the soil. We also did some measure the dynamic behavior in in, uh, in the lab of some uh, clay under different uh, axial uh, and uh, lateral pressures. And we found these, uh, these curves. So we could find the upper, res the, the response of the top based on what? On um, some uh, uh, deterministic, uh, uh, the, the continuous line uh, earthquakes determined with the, I will show you later, with some disaggregation and some uh, also a spectrum based on a probabilistic analysis for 130 and 500 years. And you can see that for 500 years, the two curves work very well. And if you go here at one Hertz, the period of vibration of the horizontal vibration, you can see that the response is very low. The, the spectrum is very low, but while at 0.3, uh, which is the the fixed base uh, uh, period of the tower, the, the horizontal response would be enormous. And so this explains uh, why the tower had so small damages. And uh, this is the disaggregation that we have no time to enter. The, we found these two input earthquake, Orciano Pisano for 500 years and Livorno for 130 years. Uh, no time to enter in any detail, except I would like all, only to show you the spectra and uh, what's happened without uh, soil structure interaction with soil structure interaction. The difference, whatever input you take is about uh, uh, from uh, 300 to 400 percent, which is very much for many, many inputs. So the numerical model of the tower, we what we did, we have the modal analysis on a very simple model, and then we tuned the model with, with the uh, input, uh, the, with the experimental uh, periods to find the exact impedances at the base. Uh, and then uh, this is a very complex foundation, which is typical of old buildings. So the formulas are very complex. So you cannot ma even make a, a finite element model is too uncertain. So if you make some guess based on the, the data of the soil, these are the numbers that you can make on some uh, uh, engineering judgment, even very accurate. And we choose uh, the foundation with the Catino built in uh, uh, the middle of 1800, and these are the numbers based on which we started, thanks to the help of Professor Marano and the Professor Quaranta, uh, our uh, uh, tuning based on uh, some genetic algorithms. And what we tuned was the frequency, this is a numerical, which depends on the stiffness and on the mass, the mass is well known, the stiffness is uncertain, especially the stiffness in the foundation. And these are the experimental. These are the numbers that we got starting from this one, while these are where the numbers in other studies, uh, which are quite different, quite different. 
So what we sh we could show is uh, uh, is that uh, we could uh, tune the model for future analysis, but more than the horizontal uh, behavior, it's interesting to see the vertical because the vertical motion here is the shape, and here is the motion is an axial motion inclined with the axis of the tower. It's not a real vertical motion. So what we found is that if you have a look to the bending moment due to the vertical seismic input, what you find, and you can see here, is that the horizontal motion for uh, small earthquakes or important earthquakes, the case C and D, uh, the horizontal motion is important, but the vertical motion gives very small, very small uh, increment to the base, uh, which is much smaller than the static, uh, which is the yellow one case. So to conclude, uh, we uh, made the vulnerability assessment of the Leaning Tower of Pisa based on a multidisciplinary approach uh, which allow to find some useful result. The bending moment, uh, the bending most uh, is around one hertz and the vertical three hertz, which is a uh, quite new, uh, were identified. The array to the uh, 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 led us to establish a, 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 a soft, a, a layer at 100 meters. And uh, we set up the numerical model including soil structure interaction and we updated the model and we found that the, the tower is a shifting period, which is enormous, unique all over the world, is the unique structure in the world. And the reduction in spectral acceleration demand due to soil structure interaction varies from 300 to 400%. And this explains why the tower stand up very well in 2020. Thank you very much for your attention. You can read the paper, the long paper on Earthwork Spectra, uh, which came out last year. Thank you very much. I'm very obrigado and thank you for all, uh, to all my friends in Portugal.